Well, I'm flunking retirement big time, but uh, I am uh, doing three design-based research projects right now. One is with the World Health Organization and actually have a PhD student that I'm helping to supervise. His primary supervisor is Jan Harrington from Edith Cowan University. The student lives in Rochester, New York. Uh, I live here in Athens, Georgia, and the project is situated uh, or literally around the world. We built a, uh, a, an online course uh, focused on better qu uh, quality management for vaccines, and so the people who go through the course are uh, public health officers in developing countries. So that's one project. I'm also working uh, on a project uh, where um, we'll be applying design-based research in the context of uh, the judicial system, particularly within prisons, and there's a group of folks that have funding to develop transformational leadership for prison wardens, and uh, I was asked to write an evaluation plan for their project, and I decided, well, you know, not just evaluation, let's actually make this a design research project, and if the funding comes in, uh, we'll be doing that. And then the third one is really exciting. Um, I've uh, uh, known a uh, doctoral, former doctoral student of Susan McKinney's from India uh, for quite some time, and she's involved in uh, teaching a uh, teacher training project using design-based research, and I'm actually going to be going to India to do some volunteer work with her in uh, November uh, in Pune, India, and her current project is uh, actually extending a model she had developed in her doctoral dissertation to 60,000 teachers in India, so that's very exciting. What I'm doing in design-based research right now is a, a project that I've been working on with a student for probably about two and a half years. It started as a class assignment and it just kind of continued on. We posed the question to ourselves, uh, what would the interface for a university look like if um, instead of a grade book metaphor, the interface was helping the student to, uh, to access a mentoring uh, metaphor. That is to say, we've, we've got the, uh, the LMSs today really record scores. At their heart, they're a spreadsheet. What if, uh, instead of doing that, the idea of a, an LMS was to help students to connect with mentored experiences in research or design or exploration? And um, what would the interface look like? It would, it would be more like a, a, a match-up place online where you could, students could go and, and review um, what kinds of opportunities are available for me? Who, maybe I want to do something in chemistry and I'm an English major. How would I go find that? And it would also give faculty members who had a project uh, the opportunity to find students who might have the skills and talents they need. So it would be kind of a meeting place. Uh, courses in that kind of a system would be considered to be a, a type of mentored experience, only a very formalized mentored experience. So anyway, we're exploring what that interface would look like and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. My, my personal view is that design-based research is, is young in the same way that other research technologies were young and had to grow. Uh, methodologies or technologies. Uh, where are they going? Um, I believe that design-based research is um, is the educator's version of something that's been going on for well over two centuries since the Industrial Revolution and that's a process of research and development that kind of what I talked about today. Um, I think it's possible for us to become enlightened and to join a tradition that's already been going on and to see the research that we do in the context of everything from ideation all the way through to productization so that our students can find their place, their niche, um, and so that we can start taking this broader, more expansive view of what we do rather than pigeonholing ourselves into a particular methodology. Impact for me is really where it's at. I really want to see us as a field move more toward what I might call 
uh, impact-inspired inquiry, uh, maybe to coin a new term, but uh, I really think uh, impact's where it's at. Now, I don't really think of design-based research as a discipline uh, um, or a field. I think of it more as a genre of research, and there's just like, uh, you know, we could talk about a musical a genre or a dance genre or something. Within the genre, there's all kinds of variations. And I think within the genre of educational design research, there are many different uh, things that can be done. And we have a lot to learn from other areas like classical research and development or like these newly emerging uh, movements like the, the lean, um, what did uh, David Wiley call it today, lean uh, entrepreneurial something, do you remember what he called it? I can't remember, yeah. but it was really good. Yeah, it was a, it was a, I like, you know, I resonated with that. I was, I was see, having a senior moment, I can't remember what it was, but uh, this lean design uh, that, uh, you know, entrepreneurs do today. Um, so I, I hope it's growing. I hope that um, our students will, uh, as they come into our graduate programs, will be involved in design research of some sort or another, or, or an R&D in some sort of another, from the day they walk in. Uh, hopefully we're over that time when students would do two or three years of coursework, then write their comprehensive exams, and then yeah. say, oh, what's my dissertation going to be about? No, they need to be involved in meaningful R&D, meaningful design research from the day they walk in the door. And, and especially in a, an increasingly entrepreneurial education world where everybody from K-12 to higher education and, and corporate is, um, is redefining its business plan. It's, it's realizing, recognizing the value of education. Mm -hmm. And entrepreneurs are coming in and uh, they're, um, they're going to become more and more competitive. And they're going to see educational research in terms of R&D in their business. And so we need to be preparing our students to take their place in a world which is becoming more and more entrepreneurial, more and more commercial. I would say get outside your college of education, your faculty of education, and get involved in your local school system, get involved in your local technical schools or community college, get involved in industry, uh, training and so forth. Go out and work with real world problems. Uh, preschool education is another area where enormous amount of work can be done. So, uh, you know, the samples of convenience that we relied upon with uh, teacher education students or whatever, those just aren't valid anymore. You need to get outside and, and work with people that own the problems. I agree. And, and I would say get outside of the literature of our field as well. That is, be familiar with the literature of our field, but don't be confined by it. Read about how things work in corporate America. Learn about how things work in, uh, in the schools. Learn how they're governed, how they're managed. And, um, but also learn how to get things, how to make things happen in the real world. How do you bring about cultural change? How do you... Uh, how do you actually find a real answer to a problem? How do, how do the people in industry who are creating products that, that are used by large numbers of consumers, how do they make their design decisions? All of these things will inform a good designer. Absolutely. I'm 66 years old. I got my first uh, Social Security check earlier this summer. Uh, but I wish I was 26, frankly, in entering this field. I'd be, uh, because there's so many exciting things happening, so many new opportunities. That said, of course, there are many more challenges as well. The traditional uh, life of an academic is changing rapidly and, and uh, people have to be much more entrepreneurial. More and more universities are expecting young faculty to fund their own research. And if you're going to do research, you're, you're going to have to uh, be entrepreneurial. So. Uh, it's an exciting time, also a more challenging time, but uh, it's, uh, it's good to still be part of it yeah. uh, and uh, I envy the young people who are just getting into it.